Okay, so I'm currently home here in Baltimore, so obviously the flight worked out, but I just wanted to make this beginning entry video. So if you're just coming to look for information, you can just watch this part and skip the rest of the video. But if you want to stay and watch my whole vlog, that's great. So first, I kind of touch on it, but I don't go into detail. What you're going to need for the immigration office is a copy of your flight. You're going to need your um, like your flight itinerary, your passport, and then the certificate from the vet. So I have a folder of all of my paperwork. So what that looks like is this. This is the paper you need from your vet. I will link my vet. He speaks English, he's great. This is not his first time doing this. He knows what the paperwork looks like. Um, very recently before I flew out, it changed. So make sure you have the correct one. Um, I was a part of the Facebook group, I still am in it. And in that Facebook group, they have links to the updated paperwork so you can print it out yourself. My vet actually had it on hand. So what you are looking for is it's gonna have your name, your address, whether you're flying with a cat, he is male and neutered. I believe in the States they have to be neutered. Um, it has his age, um, his breed, his name, his weight, his size, and then you have to have a microchip. So to fly home, your cat has to be microchipped. Um, and it has the date of his microchip and then it has his number. It's a one, two, three, four, five. It's a very long number, it's a very, very long number. And then his rabies vaccination, it has his name who manufactured it, the serial number of the rabies. Hi, TT. Hold on, you're going to have to move, TT. Excuse me. The serial number of the vaccination, the date he was vaccinated, and then how long it's good for. So that he's on, when we flew out, he wasn't even a year old yet. He was 10, 10 months. So his rabies was good for one year. And then any other vaccinations he had, um, they would have put it down here for parasites, but he didn't have any. And then the last part is, is in Korean and English, it says that I clarify the animal described is free of any in infectious diseases and no abnormal clinical sign of inspection date. And then I have the name of the hospital, their phone number, their address, and then his signature in Sharpie down here. So the once you have that vet, create that certificate is only good for 10 days so from him signing it to your flight out is 10 days within that 10 days you need to go to the quarantine office and have them with your um, plane with your flight info your passport and that you need to bring it to them and they will give you this this is ministry of agriculture food referrals public of korea health certificate for animal quarantine i asked for two of them so this is the original one everything i have i have two of them this is this this is the second copy of it i believe that the um quarantine office keeps it which is why i wanted two of everything and this just says date of issue what he is he's a korean short hair um number of him there's only one he is neutered, his color, myself, myself, where he's going. So this is where he's leaving from and where's his final destination. Um, the flight number, all of that stuff. Um, where he was born, Korea. Where he's going to, where he's flying from, where are his layovers. So he's flying from Incheon and our layovers were in Atlanta, Georgia and BWI, Baltimore. And then... Um, the date and the kind of vaccination, which is his rabies, and when he was given his rabies. So his rabies shot was given October, and we flew out in um, March. And then the last one is, once again, his microchip number and his clinical inspection, which is this that you had from the vet. His clinical inspection was normal. So then she signs it, and it has all of her information. She signed it in blue pen here. Um, it, she was really nice. She spoke English. So once you get to the airport, the first thing I had to do was do my um, COVID test and then we had to wait for two hours. Once you have that completed, you don't need the COVID test anymore as of July. You don't really need a COVID test anymore, but I still did. Once you get your COVID test, you're going to check into your boarding gate. 
I flew through Delta um, and they took this and they put it on his bag. It's our flight name. I really don't even know. Our date, my flight number, our seat, all of that stuff. This was directly clipped to his um, carrier. But I don't know if it was just the circumstances of when we flew out, but when we flew out, nobody asked to look at his paperwork. All they asked for was this. They didn't ask for anything else. This is the duplicate copy of the animal house certificate. This is the one that she like folded and then she also clipped this to his carrier to the handle in case we were ever separated, I guess. I'm not really sure. But other than that, they didn't, they didn't blink twice. They didn't ask too many questions. We were trying to get in, get out, I guess. Um, for security, um, when they went through, checked our bags, I had to hold him through the metal detector and I told him his harness had metal on it. So they just had to like wave over it. But Ryan thought it was great. He got time out of his carrier. He got so much attention. Um, and then we were boarded. So once we got to our physical airplane, I went first. Like when I first got there, I, I like went to the people and I kind of told them like, hey, I have Ryan, room. I have a cat, blah, blah, blah. And then they made the decision together. It might change, but they made the decision to have me board with him first, which was super nice. Um, I know that's not common and they were just wanted to um, keep things going quickly because we were running behind schedule. Um, but yeah, so he did a good job. This is Ryan right now. He finished growing. Look how big he is. I was just editing the video and I saw he looked like a little baby, but now he's so big. Right now he's 15 pounds. He's a big old boy. So if he was if he weighed any more i would not have been able to have him in the cabin and our plans would have been ruined so yeah i i think that it was very stressful i would not want to do it again i do not plan on doing it again um once we kind of got through everything it was stressful from getting to the airport to landing in georgia so just whatever you do keep copies of everything one or two flight like my flight paperwork here i have two copies of it my copy of um, my vaccine i have two three of it i still have my covid stamp in here like i have everything you need to stay organized i recommend getting a binder or a folder so when you are flying you have everything you need my visa i have a copy of my arc i have my visa grant notice I just found another copy of my COVID vaccine. The hardest part for me was the pension. So if you can set it up that your pension gets um, direct deposited into your account, I would do that. It would make things so much easier to me flying with a cap. So next part of this video is just gonna be my part of the vlog where I go over getting his bag and then physical us physically in the airport. But this was just me like giving a rundown of the paperwork. So good luck if you're flying with the cat home. I don't recommend Delta. <laughs> they were so nice, but just their seat dimensions was just so small. It was literally the smallest. If you could fly a Korean Air, I would do it. The other thing is, I, that I don't mention is if you have a transfer flight, your transfer flight and your flight into the country needs to be the same. So I had to fly with Delta every time. But the only reason I could not go with Korean Air is because Korean Air did not have any connecting flights in the United States that I could go for. So um, I think option, this option of us flying home was like option F. Like option G was to have my mom drive and pick us up in Georgia because it was so hard to get that connecting flight. And the times had to line up and everything like that. So we actually changed flights like two or three times just because it was so hard. And our very last option was to have me fly home and him stay with my friend Alex. And then I would pay for somebody to ship Ryan home. There is a company. The Facebook group that I mentioned before is based around shipping pets home. But he also just gives out free advice. So... <sighs> Yeah, I, if you're gonna fly with a cat home, just be prepared, have some patience in your pocket, um, 
and just keep your fingers crossed. Oh my god, I look ridiculous. Ah! Ryan, come here. Come on. Okay, so I have to... What? Why did you put this in here? Oh, gross. Okay, so I'm gonna make a video on how to take a cat home from Korea because I haven't really seen one. No, 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 no. Well, don't do that. So I have to set up his carrier right now um, and then we're gonna head to the quarantine office to get him officially like approved to travel so the first thing you're gonna need is a health certificate his health certificate from the vet is in all the paperwork I'm having to fly home like okay like for my pension I have copies of my ticket I have copies of my um, ARC visa and I have his vet inspection paperwork. It has been updated and it's changed, so a really great place to look for that is online. There's a Facebook group. I will link the Facebook group. It's where I found a lot of information. But anyways, getting a flight with him was very difficult because I need enough time at the airport to get him checked in, myself checked in, to get my pension done and to like turn over my ARC. So I needed a flight that was later in the day, but my, I also needed a flight that was approved for him. And there's not a lot, there's not a lot. But the easiest way would be Korean Air. If you have, if you can get a flight with Korean Air, that's perfect. That is ideal. Korean Air is the most pet accepting. Like you can have them as checked bat, like checked, um, so they go under the plane. Checked cargo, checked baggage. But then they have like the big hard carrier, which was my original plan with him and I had it set up so that I can do that. Oh my gosh. But, of course, Plans change, airlines change their policies. The last freaking minute. So now he has to go in. He has to go in the plane with me. Which is not the plan. Because he's big. He's a big guy. And so I have to fly with Delta. And Delta doesn't have very big airline room. So I have to get a thing that will squish down, squish down and fold out. So this carrier folds out on the sides. This bag zips out on this side. So he has this. It zips out on this side. So he has this. So he has this I can do under the plane, so he has this much room. But it has to be like this. He only has eight inches, but this is 10 inches. <sighs> I don't know what we're gonna do. This doesn't work. We don't really have any other choice. don't like is how this is set up like this on this side don't really like that like you have to carry it it's like gonna be wonky instead of it down here on the handles come here come here 
Thank you. Now, go, go, go. This is how you're gonna act. This is, this is gonna be a long flight, huh? Okay, I am at the quarantine office. This is the one that you look for with the blue sign. And you go straight and then you go to the right, I believe. Right, straight. You go this way. You go in, go to this door. They have people who speak English there, so it's great. Um, you kind of have to take... Don't go up here. My taxi guy took me all the way up here. Don't go up there. But you can just come around here and it's fine. It's a pretty long driveway and it has a gate at the end. So you're looking for a place with a gate right here. You can see the gate down there. Yeah, the gate and you just come up and it's right here. So it wasn't too bad. It only took like a half an hour max. It took longer to get here and I was actually there and she gave me paperwork and I'll show the paperwork once I get back home. But you need your vet certificate, passport, and just a copy of your flight. But yeah, as I was saying, there's like a little gate with it up there and then you can see it says up there like Seoul immigration sign and you have to go past your, you go up this hill and that's where it is up there But are you playing with your toy? Hmm? You playing with your toy? What do you think, Ryan? Oh, we made it, Ryan. We made it. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay.
Um, do not touch the camera, stinky. Okay, here we go again. I'm gonna... Ryan, go! Thank you. Okay, so, kinda. Like, I can, like, pull... No, please stop. Please stop. You are terrible. Please stop, Ryan. I really like this camera. My no no visa. My COVID vaccine. Do not do that. Ryan, stop. I'm gonna freaking lock you in the bathroom. Stop it. Stop it. Don't, 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 don't. You're gonna get smacked, boy. You're gonna get smacked. Stop it. So this one can squish down like this so it'll go under the... So it'll fold up. 